Welcome everybody to another update of the Tank Home Security Project. This is a project I'm working on to uh, act as a keypad uh, that connects to the internet for your home security. It uses Arduino, it uses Raspberry Pi, it uses a lot of great stuff. Uh, in this update, I just want to go over real quick the um, WebSocket feature that I just added. If you see right here, you see these numbers increasing uh, ready to arm 153, 154. That is just a simple um, fake input script that I wrote uh, because this is my development machine. I'm not actually connected to uh, a live panel at this point. And uh, I'm going to show you this code we're looking at right here is the, this is when I'll show you the web sockets, right? Uh, I copied a lot of this, as you can see from the example name, from the uh, AMP PHP, AMPHP project, which is uh, sort of like an alternative or competitor to um, React. Uh, React relies on Ratchet for its um, WebSockets protocol because Ratchet was already written. Um, and uh, AMP project, they have their own... HTTP server called Aris, and it's a full HTTP server. It does everything, file uploads, whatever. And it has WebSockets. So I copied their basic uh, example, uh, filled it in a little bit, added a client's array to keep track of clients, right? And the reason I went with AMP um, is so that I could simultaneously talk to Beanstalk. And AMP PHP project has a Beanstalk driver and the um, React does not. Now, I could have written one, but the more I looked into copying it, the more it looked like uh, copying AMPs and porting it to React, the more I thought, well, what am I doing? I, I, I already have it. I'm already doing most of my uh, Beanstalk talking in, uh, in AMP, so I was, I was glad to see that their um, HTTP server had WebSocket. So, um, Copied, uh, I copied one of my scripts, the boilerplate talk to Beanstalk. I copied their example um, web service and just added a function called blast. And this allows me to, um, from, from outside this process, but in the same process, just outside this loop, I can talk to this function, send it a message, and it's going to broadcast to uh, uh, everyone who's a client who's connected. It's going to send the message. So. Down here is sort of my boilerplate for talking to Beanstalk, AMP run, yada yada. Now this is all new. The sample uh, stuff that I sort of copied and pasted and put together in my awesome WebSocket. Um, then you make a host and you tell the host what to listen on. In this case, it's port 8088, 8088. Uh, and then you have to make a server, init server. Now this isn't really well documented. Most of the uh, Eris stuff is meant to be run as a program, so you just make a config file and then you run Eris from from uh, vendor bin Eris and you give it the config file and it and the config file is still PHP. You're still sort of making a host and configuring it, but how to actually run your own sort of embedded server in another application is not well documented. I found it in a bug, uh, an issue on GitHub, so um, go look there. It's init server. And this is a standalone function. Now it's still namespaced, but it's just a standalone function. Then you have to do yield start. That's gonna start the server in the background. Now, um, they both run off the same loop driver, right? Because I'm using AMP for both. That was one of the things that I didn't really wanna have one looping process uh, talking to Beanstalk and then try to talk to another looping process in another framework, even though AMP has a React um, a layer that you can use to sort of inject React components, whatever. Uh, so down here, this is all, again, this is all the um, Beanstalk. It's going to reserve. It's going to do a non-blocking reserve. It's going to reserve for zero if there's a message. Great. If not, it'll just keep going. Do a little bit of error checking to make sure I didn't get uh, empty messages or whatever. Um, and then here I JSON decode the blob that I'm getting out of Beanstalk. And then this is where I do blast, right? This is my awesome WebSocket thing. If we follow this up, we can see that uh, I make it here and then I use it here and in this promise to this callback for, for when I reserve. So if there's something 
um, from the reserve, then this when will happen, and this when does all this good stuff, and it calls the blast function. So basically anyone who's connected uh, will get the update, and if we go back to Firefox, we see this thing is still counting up, 224, 225. Pretty easy, right? Um, one of the problems I ran into was doing uh, the ports, port 80 versus 88. That here. So, um, ended up just doing ah, right here this Nginx stuff. So, um, well, there's a lot of explaining going on, but I found it easier just to pass uh, a regular 80 call to Nginx and then have it uh, internally do a reverse lookup because trying to do 80, 88 all the way from the browser through all my proxies, I, I have a standard Nginx reverse proxy that I code under just to make sure my stuff will work under load balancers. Uh, that proved to be too complicated to pass this 80, 88 through all my Docker containers and reverse proxies. So pass 80 uh, right at the ed right at the um, app server. Just go ahead and reverse proxy to 80, 88. That's the, um, these are necessary for web sockets. You need the connection upgrade and all that. And you can see that uh, uh, right here, you know, it's 101. That's the standard you give back. 101's like menu or switching protocols or whatever. And that signals to browsers that are web socket aware that this is be a web socket. So uh, it's a ton more responsive than the polling. I used to have polling. Okay, sure. Oh yeah, Firefox doesn't like to uh, show the JavaScript unless uh, you put type equal text JavaScript. So my quick update where I was going to show you the polling script and the new WebSocket script, uh, I can't figure out why Firefox isn't showing me the script, so I can't really show you. I can go to the inspector and look at the DOM nodes, and here it is all squished up into one line, right? There, there's the script tag, but when I go to debugger and I pick, eight, you know, scripts that are in the page, it's not working. Obviously, at some point, it should be modularized and included, but this was just a quick hack to make sure it works, so it was in page. None, none of my scripts are in here. Um, I can't figure it out. I mean, you can tell by the current time. I spent a lot of time researching it, whatever. I don't want to get too far off topic. This is a quick update. Uh, there are now web sockets in this project, and they're very responsive. They're much more responsive on mobile. It's great.